Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to another what is now world-famous stay-at-home Shabbat Shalom services from B'nai Zion. This Shabbat is both festive and somber. It is somber because we are commemorating American Memorial Day. It's this weekend. Our congregation has many people who served and died. Some died while serving. May the memories of everyone who has served our country and have died be a blessing, and may we be forever grateful for their service. It is also a proud Shabbat. We have new board members. To honor them and make sure you know them, they will help lead the service tonight from their homes. We appreciate these leaders who serve our congregation. As Shabbat begins, the newest holiday on the Jewish calendar ends. That is Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day. In 1967, the Wailing Wall became the Western Wall when, during the Six-Day War, we regained access to what most of us consider to be one of the most holy sites in Jerusalem, and mo one of the most holy sites in all of Jewish tradition. That is why this message is coming to you from Jerusalem. That's where my heart is. If I could be anywhere other than where I am right now, it would be in Jerusalem. Don't worry, I'm not really there, and my virtual background will switch back soon. I love B'nai Zion. Tonight, as our final installment of guest speakers for Jewish History Month, I have invited Dr. Josh Parshall, who is the director of the History Department of the Institute for Southern Jewish Life. He has a passion for Jewish history of the South and will give us his perspective on the history of the Jewish community in Shreveport and especially of B'nai Zion. As you know, even though history may not have been my strength, I have been passionate also about the fact that B'nai Zion is celebrating a special 150th anniversary this year, and I've been trying to learn what I can about our history. I am eager to glean insights from Dr. Josh about the history of our congregation and the Shreveport Jewish community. As wonderful as all of that is, the most important thing we need to do now is to get ready to visit our Oasis in Time, Shabbat. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Try again. Let it out slowly. Enjoy the peace that I hope you will find during Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Eli. And I'm Jennifer. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to serve on your board this term. These lights are only flickering flames, yet flames illuminate our uncertain steps. Flames remind us of Sabbaths long past and of their beauty that delighted our hearts. May they inspire us to work for the great Sabbath of peace. Baruch Atad and I, Elohim Melakalam, Asher Tishan, Bumatatav, Bitsivan, Lahad Lifner, Shel, Shabbat. We praise you, eternal God, sovereign of the universe. You hallow us with your mitzvot and command us to kindle the Sabbath lights. Baruch, at, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Puri HaGafen. We praise you, eternal God, sovereign of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. We praise you, eternal God, sovereign of the universe. You call us to holiness with the mitzvah of Shabbat, the sign of your love, a reminder of your creative work and of our liberation from Egyptian bondage. Our day of days, on Shabbat especially, we hearken to your call to serve you as the holy people. We pray to you, O God, for the holiness of Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Stay safe. Good evening. I'm Kathy and my granddaughter Morgan is helping me with tonight's responsive reading. I hope you'll join in with us. There are days when we seek material things and measure failure by what we do not own. On Shabbat, we wish not to acquire, but to share. There are days when we exploit nature with reckless greed. On Shabbat, we stand in wonder before the mystery of creation. There are days when we think only of ourselves. On Shabbat, we open our hearts to the needs of others. Therefore, we welcome Shabbat. Day of rest, day of joy, day of peace. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat. 
Shalom Alechem, Malachi Asharit, Malachi Elion. Mimelech, Malachi Alakim HaKadosh Baruch. Oakem the Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Hello, I'm Bernard. It's an honor, privilege, and pleasure to have been elected again to serve on the board of the temple where over 80 years ago my introduction to Judaism took place and where I first attended Sunday school, which in those days was known as Sabbath school and took place on Saturday mornings. The world has changed a lot since those days. Many lasting friendships and cherished memories are centered around this amazing institution. Stay well, stay safe, and Shabbat Shalom. Please join me in the responsive reading on page 85. The synagogue is the sanctuary of Israel, born of our longing for the living God. It has been to Israel throughout our wanderings, a visible token of the presence of God in our people's midst. Its beauty is the beauty of holiness. Steadfast, it has stood as the champion of justice, mercy, and peace. Its truths are true for all people. Its love is a love for all people. Its God is the God of all people. As it has been said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Let all the family of Israel all who hunger for righteousness, all who seek the eternal, find God here, and here find life. It kadal v'it kadash merabah, b'alma divra chiruteh, v'yamlich malchuteh, b'chayechon uv'yomechon, uv'chayedochol b'it Yisrael, Ba'agala, ba'agala, uvizmahan kariv, vimiru, amen. Yeheshmera ba'mevarach, la'alamul alme almaya, yitbarach, yitbarach, v'yishtabach, v'yitpahar, v'yitromam, v'yitnase, v'yitadar, v'yitale, v'yitalal, sh'meh t'kudisha, Brihu Leila min kol bercha tavu shirata Tush bercha tavu nechemata Damiran bealma Vimiru Amen Barahu hat adonai Hamevorach Baruch adonai Hamevorach Leolam Shabbat Shalom, this is Goldie. Before I get started reading my prayer, I would like to thank the board members for choosing me to be on the board and to congratulate the old board members for what a great job they did. Oh God, how can we know you? Where can we find you? You are as close to us as breathing, yet you are farther than the farthermost star. You are as mysterious as the vast solitudes of night, yet as familiar to us as the light of the sun. To Moses you said, You cannot see my face, but I will make all my goodness pass before you. Even so does your goodness pass before us in the realm of nature and in the joys and sorrows of life. 
When justice burns within us like a flaming fire, when love evokes willing sacrifice from us, when to the last full measure of selfless devotion, we demonstrate our belief in the ultimate triumph of truth and righteousness, then your goodness enters our lives and we can begin to change the world. And then you live within our hearts and we through righteousness behold your presence. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malechuto Leolam Vaed Ve'ahavta Ehet Adonai Elohecha V'chol Levavcha U'v'chol Nafshecha ובכל מאודך, והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבביך, ושיננתם לבניך, ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך, ובלכתך בדרך, ובשוכבך ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות אהל ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. למען תזכרוהו, ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני, אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. You shall love your eternal God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your being. Set these words which I command you this day upon your heart. Teach them faithfully to your children. Speak of them in your home and on your way when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign upon your hand. Let them be symbols before your eyes. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Be mindful of all my mitzvot and do them. So shall you consecrate yourselves to your God. I am your eternal God who led you out of Egypt to be your God. I am your eternal God. Hello, I'm Don Weiner. I'm one of the new board members. I, the Eternal One, have called you to righteousness, in taking you by the hand, and kept you. I have made you a covenant people, a light to the nations. We are Israel, witness to the covenant between God and God's children. This is the covenant I make with Israel. I will place my Torah in your midst, and write it upon your hearts. I will be your God, and you shall be my people. We are Israel. Our Torah forbids the worship of race or nation, possessions or power. You who worship gods that cannot save you, hear these words of the Eternal One. I am God, there is none else. We are Israel. Our prophets proclaimed an exalted vision of the world, for the world. Hate evil and love what is good. Let justice well up as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. We are Israel, schooled in the suffering of the oppressed. You shall not oppress your neighbors, nor rob them. You shall not stand idle while your neighbors bleed. We are Israel, taught to beat swords into plowshares, commanded to pursue peace. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, desolation and destruction within your borders. All your children will be taught of your God, and great shall be the peace of your children. We are Israel, O God, when we are witness to your love and messenger, messengers of your truth. You are my witnesses, says the Eternal One, and my servant, whom I have chosen. Know me, therefore and put your trust in me. We are Israel, O God, when we proclaim you, God, our Redeemer, 
and did our as did our ancestors on the shores of the Red Sea. Yeah, la 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 Hi, I'm Larry, and I'm honored to serve on the Temple Board for this year. May we lay down this night in peace and rise up to life renewed. O oh God, spread over us your shelter of peace, of quiet and calm, and bless us with rest. And let a time come when morning will bring no word of war or famine or anguish, a time of happiness, of contentment and rest. We give thanks for the night and its rest and the promise of peace for all the world. Shabbat Shalom and everyone stay safe out there. Eternal God, open my lips that my mouth may declare your glory. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe Avotenu, Vimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Leah, Velohe Rachel. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora el elion gomel chasadim tovim v'koneh ha'kol v'zocher chaste avot v'imahot u'mevi gula livne v'neham l'ma'an shema be'ahava melech ozer u'moshia u'magen baruch ata Adonai magen Avraham ve'ezrat Sara. God of all generations, of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, be praised. Your wondrous creative power fills heaven and earth. God of life and death, be praised. Through us, send help to the falling, healing to the sick, freedom to the captive. Confirm your faithfulness to those who sleep in the dust. Awesome and holy God, be praised. With acts of love and truth, we hallow your name, as it is said, Y'all be holy, for I, your eternal God, am holy. 
God of times and seasons, be praised. Enable us through Sabbath rest to explore and learn and impart the meanings of your Torah. Make our hearts ready to serve you this day and all days. God, who answers prayer, be praised. May we, your people Israel, be worthy in our deeds and our prayer. Wherever we live, wherever we seek you, in this land, in Zion restored, in all lands, you are our God. Source of life and its wonders, be praised. You are the miracle within all we behold. You are goodness. You are compassion. We give thanks to you forever. God of peace, of justice, and of love, be praised. Inspire us to banish forever hatred, war, and bloodshed. Help us to establish forever one human family united in peace. God of peace, bless us with peace. Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tassim Lo'olam Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tassim Lo'olam Ki Yotahu Melech Adon L'Kol HaShalom Until this point in our service, all of the words that we have been reading or saying or singing have been words that have been given to us from our tradition. This is the time in our service where we get to pray, reflect on the words and the emotions that are in our hearts. You are welcome to use the words that the prayer book gives us that's on the screen or pray with whatever your heart prompts as we take some time for silent prayer. Ihi u le ratzon, lay the words of my mouth. Him re fi vehegion li bi, and the meditations of my heart. Le fane ha be acceptable to you lefanecha 
be acceptable to you. Adonai Turi, God my rock, Turi Vigohali, my rock and my redeemer, Adonai Turi, God my rock. Vigohali and Redeemer. At this time, we fulfill a mitzvah, a commandment. In the Torah, we are commanded to count the Omer. We are commanded to count 49 days and 7 times 7 weeks. So we say a bracha, a blessing, in order to fulfill a commandment. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedeshanu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Sfirat HaOmer Praised are you, our eternal God, sovereign of the universe, who has made us holy with your mitzvot and commanded us about counting the Omer. This is the last Shabbat that we'll be counting. Hayom Arba'a V'Arba'im Yom Shehem shisha shavuot ushne yamim laomer. Today is the 44th day, making six weeks and two days of the Omer. There are a number of people in our community, congregation and congregational family and friends, for whom we're praying for recuperation. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are trying to take care of them. We also pray, especially these days, for those who are suffering with the COVID ailments. This week in Caddo Parish, they're showing that we are up to 2,272 cases. One of the things that we've learned is that we are in a position to be testing more, uh, so it's hard to compare numbers for that, but we do have that number as of today. We have had 156 deaths in Caddo Parish. Last week we were 126. In Bossier, we have 374 cases reported. This week, they're reporting there have been 24 deaths. Last week, there were 22 deaths. In Louisiana, we are reporting, as of this morning, 36,504 cases with 26,249 recuperated. But we're also reporting 2,506 deaths this week, when last week we had 2,351. In the United States, we're reporting 1,551,095 cases with 382,944 recuperated, but we're also reporting 93,061 deaths in the United States, and last week we reported 84,119. In the world, we're reporting 5,232,413 cases as of this morning, with 2,111,765 recuperated. But we're also reporting that this week we've had 335,635 deaths, and last week we only had 275,528. We pray for everyone who is ill, everyone who is recuperating, everyone who is dealing with the consequences of confinement or coping with the recent death of loved ones. O oh God, in our hearts, we name those who are facing illness and pain. We join our prayers with the prayers of all who love them. Give them renewed comfort and courage. Strengthen in them the healing powers you have placed within us all. Guide the hands and hearts of those who are entrusted with their care. May the knowledge of your love and ours give added hope to them and to their dear ones. May they find even greater strength because our prayers are linked to theirs. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofeh Cholim. We praise you, eternal God, the source of healing and health. <laughs> Source of strength, who blessed the ones before.
us Help us find the courage To make our lives a blessing And let us say Amen Bless those in need of healing With refuah shlema The renewal of body The renewal of spirit Let us say Amen Can you hear that song? May it be God's will. At this point in our service, we turn our hearts and our prayers to those who are putting themselves into dangerous situations so that we can survive. That includes people in the military, the police force, our fire force, the EMTs, the doctors, the nurses, everyone involved in the healing and medical profession. It includes the people who have to, to clean up after everyone. Uh, it includes the veterans who have served in these positions. Now we also include heroes like those who are serving in the supermarkets or the restaurants who are making sure that we have food at this time. We say, May the one who blessed and protected our ancestors guard all those whom we've entrusted with the responsibility of defending our freedom, protecting us, healing us, in this country, in the land of Israel, and everywhere they've been called to serve. Give them courage to succeed, strength to persevere, protect them, God, May they return home safely, and let us say Amen. It is now my honor to introduce our guest speaker today. In honor of Jewish History Month, I have invited Josh Parshall, Ph.D. He is the director of the History Department of the Goldring Waldenberg Institute of Southern Jewish Life, which we, of course, affectionately call the ISJL. Dr. Josh Parshall has served as the director of the ISJL History Department since July 2017 and was also the oral historian from 2009 to 2013. His academic interests include American Jewish culture and politics, Yiddish language and culture, and Southern studies. I think you'll find that they will be reflected in the presentation that he gives us. Dr. Josh? Hey, it's great to be here tonight. I'm Josh Parshall, Director of History at the Institute of Southern Jewish Life. Um, and you know, the ISGL has had a long partnership with B'nai Zion. I'm really happy to continue that in this capacity uh, here tonight, even if it is uh, on an, in an online format rather than face-to-face. -face. So I've been invited to talk about B'nai Zion, about the Jewish history of Shreveport, and about Jewish history in the South. Um, in celebration of the 150-year anniversary of the beginning of synagogue life there in Shreveport. So I want to do a few things tonight. I'm going to talk about uh, how typical Shreveport is in some ways for a small southern city uh, in terms of its Jewish history. When I was starting this, I, I went to the, the ISJL's online encyclopedia of Southern Jewish communities. And I was reading the, the Shreveport entry, entry and I was really struck by the, the extent to which you could teach a lot of the history of Jews in the South through the lens of Shreveport. As much as Shreveport is typical, it also has a really rich diversity of Jewish identities and Jewish experiences in its history. And I wanna highlight that for a moment today. Um, that may be less of a surprise for people familiar with Shreveport, but to folks from outside the region, to people who don't know about um, Jewish history in some of these southern cities, it might be a little bit of a surprise. It also happens to be an area where I have a real interest. And then lastly, I want to talk about the last 50 so years um, of Shreveport's Jewish history, uh, which is in part a story of decline, but is also a, a story of perseverance and again, really typifies uh, Jewish history in um, analogous cities, right? You, you can look at what has happened over the last few decades in Shreveport and easily compare it to what has happened here in Jackson, Mississippi, to Montgomery, Alabama, to a number of cities in the region, uh, as well as cities outside the region. So um, Jewish life in the Shreveport area begins 
uh, in the mid, uh, really early 19th century, uh, as it does in so many similar parts of the South. Uh, we see Jewish arrivals coming from Central Europe um, for a variety of reasons, coming oftentimes to a, a port city first and then making their way into the interior. So in the Shreveport area, this happens to be Jacob Bodenheimer, or Bodenheimer. Uh, he, you were actually introduced to him last week by Dr. Gary Joyner, who showed a picture of his, his grave. Um, so Bodenheimer um, arrived in Bossier Parish in 1827. He was 19 years old. He had come from uh, a town near Frankfurt um, at, the, at the age of 14. He settled first in New Orleans and actually came to Northwest Louisiana as part of a trading group that traveled up the Red River to trade with Caddo Indians. Um, according to historical legend, the boat overturned in a place called Loggy Bayou, just south of present-day Bossier Parish. Um, and despite these merchants, these traders, losing all of their merchandise and their goods, Bodenheimer uh, stayed in the area. First, he settled at a place called Moscow, Ma Moscow Landing, uh, and then in Bellevue, the original seat of Bossier Parish, which is uh, 20 miles or so northeast of Shreveport. Uh, Bodenheimer became a successful merchant. He raised a family. In letters to, uh, to family and friends, he, he encouraged other Jewish migrants to settle in the area. Um, he also served as the mayor of Bellevue. When he died in the late 1860s, he was a well-known and influential local merchant. So Bodenheimer, um, and we note this sort of with his original intent of coming to the area to trade with the Caddo Indians, um, Bodenheimer is sort of represents the sort of settler colonial context in which these early Jews arrived in Northwest Louisiana and in, indeed in the rest of the American South, right? They, they left Europe because of push factors, uh, anti-Jewish restrictions, a lack of economic opportunities, uh, political turmoil. And they came to the South because it was a place where they could, could make a life for themselves, where they could sort of gain entry into uh, the middle class. Um, and that is, um, you know, sort of made possible because of these settlement patterns, because of the removal of Indians out of the Southeast to other territories. So the Caddo Indians that Bodenheimer had initially come to trade with were removed to Texas in 1845 and then later pushed on to Oklahoma. Um, that Jewish settlement was also dependent on the economics of slavery and the practice of enslavement. Jews who settled uh, in places like Shreveport made their lives there uh, as sort of integral part of these trade hubs that developed to serve surrounding rural areas whose agricultural systems uh, depended on the labor of enslaved Africans. The earliest Shreveport Jews uh, followed the general pattern of Jewish settlers in the pre-Civil War South. Those with the resources to do so uh, owned enslaved people, um, typically in small numbers, uh, because these weren't, uh, in most cases, planters or major landowners, right? These are more urban merchants, traders, and so they, they would enslave a few people who worked either as domestic workers or perhaps as porters uh, in a business. Uh, among the founders of you know, the earliest congregation in Shreveport uh, was Abraham Winter, who's listed in the slave schedule of 1860 uh, as having enslaved four people, um, as did each of the Jacobs brothers, Benjamin and Edward, who are, are notable uh, early Jews in Shreveport's history who, who are mentioned um, in our uh, encyclopedia entry. Uh, so that, that sort of position um, as, as potential slave owners, uh, that position as sort of accepted for the most part uh, white folks, you know, reflects this long participation of Jews in the development of the city of Shreveport, um, as it does in many other cities across the South. We see that with the prominence of Jewish business people. Uh, obviously, there are you know, well-known, multi-generation, uh, mercantile um, firms that were run by Jews and that bore Jewish names in the city, right? There were you know, obvious Jewish storefronts in Shreveport for decades and decades. Um, we also see this sort of long participation reflected in the um, 1915 Cotton Street Temple still standing, still bears the name uh, B'nai Zion on it. Um, it's a real marker of wealth, of acceptance, of acculturation, um, both in its physical appearance 
uh, as well as its prominent central location and its proximity to other major congregations, right? There's an Episcopal congregation basically across the street. Uh, it's just down the way from a, a large Methodist church. Um, you know, I, I took myself on a, a sort of a Google Maps walking tour of that part of downtown. Um, and I think that, uh, again, that, that edifice in that location speaks to a high degree of acculturation um, and a high degree of sort of success and, and indeed acceptance. That acceptance is exemplified uh, then in the election of Jewish mayors. Uh, Shreveport has had four Jewish mayors in its history. Um, two that I'll highlight right now were elected in the early 20th century. Uh, ben Holzman, elected in 1900, was a German-born merchant who arrived in Shreveport in 1865. Uh, and Ernest Bernstein, elected 1906, worked in banking as well as in the oil industry, uh, which really was the uh, sort of the, the key engine of the city's rapid early 20th century growth. Um, both Holzman and Bernstein actually were involved in Orthodox congregations or Orthodox uh, minions there in Shreveport. And so despite the prominence, I think, of, of B'nai Zion's, you know, very sort of classical reform appearing uh, uh, synagogue downtown, um, and, you know, just despite the sort of the way in which the reform Jewish story dominates, in some cases, our sense of the Jewish South, we see in a small city like Shreveport uh, a rich variety of Jewish identities over time. Right. El Har, the precursor congregation to B'nai Zion, uh, itself started as uh, an Orthodox congregation. It was founded in 1861. Uh, they took the name Hebrew Zion in 1866, and by that point, it had really begun its its journey to becoming uh, a reform congregation, um, right? So it's the end of the Civil War. Most congregants really supported uh, reform affiliation, uh, used the use of a reform prayer book, services in English, mixed seating for families, all of those things. Um, but there were those who, who wanted to continue uh, Orthodox practice or traditional practice. Uh, in the 1870s, uh, an Orthodox group actually left to worship on their own, but that was a short-lived split, right? Those two congregations come back together in 1877, uh, maintaining reform affiliation, but agreeing to remain sympathetic to traditional practices. Uh, we see the uh, several examples, I think, in the history of Shreveport and in the history of B'nai Zion, um, of the ways in which these smaller Jewish communities couldn't afford uh, not to work together in some instances. So in the early 20th century, when you've got larger numbers of East European Jews arriving, um, forming, you know, new congregations, uh, we see that Hebrew Zion, as it was called at the time, uh, actually supported the formation of Agudas Achim. Uh, when Agudas Achim was struggling financially to uh, to complete construction on its first synagogue. Uh, in the midst of, uh, of a yellow fever epidemic in the early 20th century, we know that Hebrew Zion congregants supported it, uh, even as Hebrew Zion remained the largest and most visible Jewish institution in the city. Among non-religious organizations, and indeed among non-religious Jews, you know, there were social groups, there were Zionist organizations. Uh, Shreveport also had its own branch of the Workman's Circle, and this is a, a tangent that's just related to my own research. Um, but the Workman's Circle, or, or Arbiter Ring, as it was known in Yiddish, uh, was a Jewish fraternal organization for Eastern European immigrants that uh, supported Yiddish language and culture, provided mutual aid for its members, uh, and engaged in left-wing politics. Um, and again, sort of just to show the wide uh, range of Jewish identities, of Jewish practices, uh, you know, there were for several decades, there was a group um, there in Shreveport, right, that would, would hold its meetings in Yiddish, that brought in uh, Yiddish lecturers from across the country, that would host, uh, you know, regional groups like a Yiddish dramatic group from Houston, uh, as well as regional um, meetings and conferences on a few occasions. Um, So we've got this early history that really reflects the sort of deeply embedded uh, sort of Jewish history in the development of Shreveport as a city. Uh, we've got this really rich sort of variety of experiences, uh, moments of fracture as well as moments of cooperation. Um, 
And in the last 50 or so years, uh, there is this history of, of decline and perseverance. Um, it's estimated that Shreveport's Jewish population peaked in 1915 at about 2,500 Jewish residents. That population seems to have remained fairly stable for several decades. Uh, there was a sizable Jewish population there through the end of World War II. Uh, during that period, uh, Barksdale Air Force Base brought an influx of Jewish service members. Uh, and even as late as 1960, there was a, a Jewish population uh, estimate you know, that put the figure at 2,500 people, right? indicating 40 years of, of relative stability. Um, that started to change in the next few decades, though. Um, you know, the, the standard story is about uh, Jewish family businesses where a son, or in some cases a daughter, left for college, got married, and sought professional opportunities in a larger city. Larger cities offered, um, you know, different types of jobs. Uh, you see this movement from uh, sort of small business ownership into the professions. Uh, you see people moving for educational and cultural reasons, and you see people moving in some cases to be part of larger wow. Jewish communities. That, in, that is a perk uh, of some of the larger cities. That trend was, was significant enough that by 1986, a quarter of the Jewish population of Shreveport uh, was 65 years old or older. Um, and in 2000, the year 2000, the area's Jewish population um, had contracted from that sort of uh, 2,500 uh, high mark down to 800 individuals. And really that experience mirrors that of other Southern uh, smaller cities, uh, that of small towns in the South, and that of smaller Jewish communities uh, across the country, um, where sort of a combination of factors have led folks away. Um, but we also see that the people who remain in these Jewish communities uh, have been pretty tenacious in terms of remaining visible in the broader community, in terms of uh, continuing um, sort of a full slate of synagogue activities, continuing to work together uh, in regional bodies, certainly is, is part of, um, I think, the legacy of Shreveport's uh, really great partnership with the Institute of Southern Jewish Life. Um, and even as we look at sort of the challenge of decline, which has been a challenge that we've experienced over decades, uh, as well as the immediate challenge, um, right? That challenge of the pandemic, which has caused us to meet uh, across a screen tonight instead of face to face, uh, we can also reflect back on a really long history um, of, of, of contributing to the local um, sort of civic life, uh, of, of pursuing a meaningful Jewish life, even in uh, perhaps an unexpected place, um, and of working together to move forward. So um, as you celebrate 150 years of uh, Shreveport's sort of institutionalized Jewish history, uh, I hope that that history sort of fuels your ongoing commitment uh, to Jewish life there. And I know that the Institute of Southern Jewish Life is really proud uh, to be your partner in that. So um, thank you so much for your time and attention tonight. I hope that everyone has a really restful and a really healthy uh, Shabbat. Thank you and take care. Good evening, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us on our online Shabbat evening service. Thank you, Dr. Parshall, for speaking with us about the history of the Jewish Shreveport community. Mazel Tov to my board, which includes not only the new board members we honored tonight, but everyone who is continuing to serve as well. The B'nai Zion office is checking all mail, email, and phone calls. If you have any business for the office, please try to take care of it from home. If you need to come to the office, please call ahead. Tonight following service, there will be a Zoom on it Shabbat. Go to the B'nai Zion website to sign in. Shabbat Torah study at 945 and service at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning will also be by Zoom. In order to participate, please go to the B'nai Zion media page and use the form to request the Zoom access. Learn Hebrew with Rabbi Jonah, a basic Hebrew class which will meet Wednesday nights 
from 5.30 to 6.30 beginning June 3rd. Please again go to the B'nai Zion website to sign up for the Zoom information email. This class will teach you to read and understand the Hebrew of our prayers, which is a foundation for learning any Hebrew. She is also continuing her Biblical Hebrew class on Thursday evenings from 5.30 to 6.30. That will also begin June 4th. We watch for a new alphabet class as well. Next Friday, May 29th, we will celebrate Shavuot and commemorate our last Yitzker of the year as part of the Shabbat evening service. Shavuot commemorates the giving of the Torah and the mitzvot. Rabbi Jana would love for you to help her lead the service by recording yourself reading a selection. Please contact her soon if you will accept an honor for next Friday. Everyone who loves the stay-at-home services that include congregants reading selections. Rabbi John will explain what to do and how to do it. The congregation would love to see you. The office will be closed this coming Monday, May 25th in commemoration of Memorial Day. The office will also be closed Friday, May 29th in comm commemoration of our holiday. Beginning this Tuesday and continuing through Labor Day, summer hours will be in effect those being from 9 to 12, Mondays through Fridays, except for Jewish or federal holidays. Two weeks from tonight, June 5th, will be Sim Simcha Shabbat, when we honor everyone with birthdays and anniversaries in June. Three Thursdays in June, we will have special events at 7 p.m. on Zoom. June 11th, there will be a Jewish comedian. June 18th, there will be a single so storyteller. I'm sorry, that was a singer, not a single. <laughs> and on June 25th, we will have a scholar. Watch the B'nai Zion website and emails for more details. These cultural events are part of the cultural pro programming offerings from ISGL. Donations were made to B'nai Zion in loving memory this week of Fanny Goldman by Sharon and Elliot Goldman, in loving memory of Dr. Harold Levy by Marcia and Jim Levy, and in loving memory of Sylvia Rosenzweig by Lisa Marcus. We continue our service as we turn to page 148 as the ark is open, I ask you to please rise. Aleinu l'shabach l'adon ha'kol L'atet g'dula l'yotzer b'reshit Sh'lo ha'sanu k'goye ha'aratzot V'lo ho'samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkenu kahem, vigor alenu kechol hamonam, vanahnu koreim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech malache hamlachim, hakadosh baruch. You spread out the heavens and establish the earth. You are our God, there is none else. In truth, you alone are our sovereign God, as it is written. Know then this day and take it to heart. The eternal one is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. There is none else. Eternal, eternal God, God, we, we face, face the morrow with, with hope made stronger by the vision of your deliverance. A world where poverty and war are banished, where injustice and hate are gone. Teach us more and more to respond to the pain of others, to heed your call for justice, that we may bring nearer the day when all the world shall be one. On that day, the age-old dream shall come true. On that day, O God, you shall be one and your name shall be one.
When the ark is closed, you may be seated. Our thoughts turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. It has become the tradition at B'nai Zion that we acknowledge those who have died in what we call the front lines, whether they are police or firefighters or healthcare workers, uh, those who are in the supermarkets and restaurants all the time and who have caught this virus. But this weekend, we especially also remember those who have died in the line of duty in our military, in every branch of the military. And we also acknowledge those who served in the military, came home and died at their home or with their families, however many years after they served. We have placed flags at the sites of all of the veterans who are buried in the Jewish cemeteries, and we remember them and honor their memory This week, we are remembering and acknowledging that we have lost 18 people in our military this year, including First Lieutenant Traverius Raven Bowman, who served in the Army. He was 25 from South Carolina. We acknowledge that we have lost 86 police officers already this year. 38 law enforcement officers have died as a result of contracting the virus in the line of duty. We've lost two canine officers. We've lost 35 firefighters, including one loss from this week. And we have lost over a 1,000 healthcare workers worldwide who have contracted the COVID-19. They commit themselves to difficult, draining work and put themselves at the risk of infection to try to help heal and protect us. May their memories be for a blessing. May their families be consoled. May we be forever grateful. As we remember them, let us meditate on the meaning of love and loss of life and death. This week, in commemoration of American Memorial Day weekend, we remember those among our community who have served proudly in our military. You'll notice that we've put new flags up at the cemetery. It is an incredibly proud thing to see the number of people who have served from our congregation and we acknowledge them now as we use this prayer, use core for a soldier to remember them, those who you hold in your hearts, or you can choose to use a silent prayer that is in your heart. However brief may be our time on earth, O God, you endow our fleeting days with abiding worth. We now recall the loved ones whom death has recently taken from us. We acknowledge those who have died recently during the past month, during the Shoshim period. We remember Dr. David Safir, and we remember congregants' parents who died within the past year. We remember Isabel Posner, Carol Ginsburg, Johnny Engelbert, Dean Thomas Pratt, and Lewis Carroll Jr. As we remember those who died at this season in years past, we take them into our hearts with our own. Those for whom our congregation is observing your site this week include those for whom our congregational family are observing your site include Claire Anthony, Dr. Albert Axel, Morris Barron, Celeste Dreyfus, Annie Feigelson, Elsie N. Goldberg, Fanny Goldman, Clara Goldman, Elizabeth Hamner, Dr. Harold Levy, Esther Selber Rosenthal, Sylvia Rosenzweig, Aaron Selber Sr., Richard Stewart, and Mary Elaine Vasca. In this moment of memory, our griefs and sympathies are mingled. Loving God, together we rise and we praise your name. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemer abba be'alma divra chiruteh v'yamlich malchuteh b'chayichon u'v'yomechon u'v'chayi d'chol b'yit Yisrael ba'agala u'v'zman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe Shemer Rabba Mivarach La Alam Ul Alme Almaya Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Pahar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shemed Kudsha Brihu 
לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש בחתה ונחמתה, דאמירן בעלמא, ואמרו אמן. יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. May the one who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, let peace descend on us, on all Israel, and on all the world, and let us say, Amen. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together, as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hamotzi lechem min haaretz, B'tei havon. Thank you for worshiping with us. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom. Yivarech ha Adonai v'yishmarecha. May God bless you. May God protect you. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chuneka. May the light of God's face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God's face always be lifted up to you. I like to think that God has something that God looks up to you about. And may God grant you peace. Shabbat shalom. Be safe. Stay home. Shabbat shalom.